Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, I'm talking with Jack Hanley. It's a bit of a different episode. Not only is Jack a landscaper, he's currently towards the end of his third year in his apprenticeship, but he's currently running 50 kilometres every day for 50 days while also working full-time Monday to Friday. So uh, when I found out about the story, I couldn't believe it, how insane that was. Because I, Some people struggle just to work as a landscaper five days a week, let alone adding, what is that, 350 kilometres worth of running in a, a week as well on top of that. So I wanted to get him on and hear, hear about his story. Uh, he's running to raise money for mental health awareness. And there's a couple of other uh, podcast episodes that he's been on uh, on the Humble Climb podcast. So I'll put links in the show notes to, to them, as well as the link on how you can donate towards Jack and also get one of the shirts that he's selling, which I'll be wearing next week. But it's just a fascinating story. And the more you look into what he's doing, the more amazing it is. So I couldn't get over some of the, like how much effort he's putting into it. Uh, and, and it's to help other people. So he, if you listen to, I didn't go into the details of it too much, but he, he if you listen to the Humble Climb podcast, he talks about the, uh, some of the troubles he had in his earlier life. So he's, um, yeah, climbed out of that hole and now is thriving and helping other people as well. So, just an amazing effort, amazing person, and couldn't be more happy to have him on the podcast and share his story while it's still going. So he's uh, this uh, the, when this comes out, he's he's already run uh, fifteen of the fifty, fifteen days of the fifty days, and he'll be finishing on the third of December, twenty twenty three. So uh, jump on his Instagram and follow along because it's it's an awesome page to follow as well. Just just to be inspired by someone who's doing so much and it also happens to be a landscaper. So hopefully you enjoy this chat with Jack Hanley. Jack, thank you very much for joining us on the Landscaping Podcast. My first question for you is how did you start in the industry? Yeah, so first, the second year out of school, I um, started working for a um, landscaping company, more just cancel work. We used to do big turf oval renovations and sort of all the stuff that you do for the council. And that was about, yeah, did that for a couple of years. And then one of my mates started his own landscaping business. Yeah. So once he went, once he finished up at the company we were at, I went across to him and um, yeah, started doing an apprenticeship with him. Yeah. Awesome. Is that what sort of work were, was he doing? Is that, is that where you are now? That's where I'm at now. Yeah. So we're, I mean, you were a turf and landscapes. And he's, yeah, we do full backyard, front yard renovations, um, the hardscapes, softscapes, a bit of everything. So that's the best thing about landscaping. You've got such a variety of different things. Um, you're doing something different every day, which uh, which makes it really cool. And also I love seeing what the product was at the start and then what it is at the finish. I, get, I think that's the best thing about landscaping. You get great satisfaction out of it. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, that's exactly the same. Like the variety of all the different things you do is one of my favourites because every day is different. Uh, and if, you, if there's something you don't like, you're not going to be doing it for long anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, that, that's exactly right. Not, all that, not everything in landscaping is fun, but no. you, have your, you have your good days and you have your bad days. It's all a part of it. Yeah. So what size crew are you working with? So there's me, I'm a third year apprentice, nearly nearly qualified. Um, and then we've got my boss and then we've got a second year as well. And then we've got, yeah, we get a couple of subbies in to help labouring every now and again if we've got a real big job on. Um, but, yeah, we're only a small crew. He's sort of just building himself up, which is uh, – but we've got a great crew that we work with. Really enjoy going to work every day with them. Yeah, and what sort of areas are in your Mel- you're in Melbourne, are you? So what sort of areas around there? Do you work? Yeah, so we're in Melbourne. We do most of our work southeastern suburbs, but yeah, we also venture down to the peninsula a fair bit. We do a lot of uh, golf courses as well, so we do a lot of turf laying. So we'll lay, especially throughout uh, spring and summer, the busy time, spring, summer, autumn. We do a lot of um, yeah laying of fairways through different golf clubs. Is there anything different in the when they lay in those turf rolls compared to what you do in like a backyard? Is there anything different? No, yeah, not like really. A, just just uh, just a lot lot bigger area. Yeah, a lot more what turf about the preparation. 
So with the golf courses, we don't do really do much prep work for them. They've sort of got their own crew in to do that, and then we just come in and do, do the big lays for them. Yeah. And what's your favourite favorite part about landscaping? My favourite part about landscaping, I've sort of said it before, but I get great satisfaction out of seeing what the product was to the end product. I think yeah. um, when you can visualise, you know, what you've done is is, is just awesome to see and, it, and seeing the satisfaction in the client's face, how happy they are, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to see. Yeah. Yeah, I find it, it seems like some, or not all the time, but a lot of the time the people who are spending less money have more appreciation for when you do the complete makeover of their job. Yeah, 100%. And what about the, like, of all the different trades within landscaping, what's your preference on doing? I've got to say, I love I love doing the soft scopes, love the turf, love the irrigation side of things, you know, garden beds, edging, all that sort of stuff. And I also do like, I'm just gro- the paving side of things is growing on me a bit now. Took me a while to get going, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy it now. So they're probably they're probably the main ones. As as I said earlier, just the variety of different things that you're doing in landscaping, that's the best thing. You're always changing up what you're doing. It's not going to be the same thing every day, which is yeah. which is the best thing. And the paving you're doing, is that on a mortar base or is that a flexible paving? Yeah, but usually on mortar base. Occasionally what sort of we'll be on, uh, we do blue stone, we do crazy paving, sandstone, a bit of everything. I'd say the most popular one though is probably I mean, oh, this year we've done a lot of crazy paving, mm. which is uh which is always good fun. Getting it all uh getting it all cut in first before we lay it. But yeah, no, I I, I enjoy doing that. Yep. And you have you got plan you've already started your own Instagram page for your business, so you've got plans to go out on your own eventually. Yeah, I reckon in the future, definitely, for sure. I, I really enjoy where I'm working at at the moment. I've got a good relationship with my boss. We're sort of, we're close mates. So, yeah, definitely, definitely in the future, would like to do some more of my own stuff, but you never know, we might join in together at some stage. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some people do that. Like, it's good having that guy there if you are uh, doing wanting to do that because you can – Go out and do a couple of your own jobs, and then if you haven't got, if you've got a spare moment, you can go back and work for him. If you're scratching around, so it's good to have that good relationship where you work to do your own yeah. jobs as well. Yeah, definitely. And you always, I feel like you're always going to keep good relationships with people that you work with because you never know, you know, what might happen in the future. Mm, yeah, uh, and the main reason I got you on is is because like you're. You've got an you've got that landscaping Instagram page, but you've also got an Instagram page called Crazy Running Man, which is yep. one of the most accurate Instagram pages I've seen. <laughs> yeah. like it was yep. was it the start of this year you did a hundred kilometer run. Yeah, so we did a hundred k fundraiser run back in Feb this year, early Feb, which was uh, one of the best, uh, one of the best days I've been a part of. We were able to raise. 30, so I'll give you a little background anyway. So this T-shirt that I'm wearing, out of the blue, it's called the uh, Mental Health Charity. It's a um, it's a charity we've started up at the footy club that I play at called uh, Old Day Life So, so yeah, we're just aiming aiming to sort of reduce the stigma around mental health, raise awareness, get people talking about it, and yeah. So back in Feb, we did a did a hundred k run. Me and, and two other mates uh, did the whole hundred. And then we had about eighty people come down and run throughout the day, and it was right. up. It was it was great. So one of the one of the better days I've been a part of. Was there a lot of organising and getting that up and running? Yeah. So yeah, it was. We well, well, I put in a um, I did about a twenty week training block to get ready for it so through one of my coaches called Kev Manix. He's um he's got a running company to, uh, called called Run for Body and Soul. Soul. So I got ready that through that, got me cherry right for the uh, for the event, and then um, yeah, just pretty much got it going on the socials throughout the twenty weeks that I was training for it. Then one of one of my mates came up with a hundred k loop that we mapped out, um, and then we had a big fundraiser day at the uh, at the finish line, which was a, a bowls club, and uh, some of the I'm not too sure if you had a look at some of the videos, but. Um, the finish line was unbelievable. We had about two hundred people at the finish line, and then we had a, you know, had a big barbecue and a few drinks at, at the bowls club, and yeah, it, was, it was a great day. Yeah, makes the last that last run you get pumped up with the crowd going nuts for you. Oh, it's unbelievable. And then uh, it seemed like 
before you'd finished that almost, you already had plans for the next one that you're doing, that you're in the middle of it almost at the moment. Yeah, so I sort of, I had the, I came up with the idea of uh, running 50K a day for 50 days sort of back in January. And then we finished, after we finished the 100K run, and I, I wanted to see how I went first physically and mentally. And I found it quite quite easy I, when I finished, like after finishing, which is I wasn't sure how I was going to how I was going to feel, but yeah, I felt like I had plenty left in the locker in the tank. So decided to uh, once footy season was finished, yeah, get stuck into uh, running fifty k a day for fifty days. What was the furthest you'd run before the hundred? The furthest I ran, so we did a sixty five k run in training. It was actually quite funny because I actually that was one of the tougher runs I've had to I've, I ever did. I was coming off a big wake up in Port Douglas, and I went up there for a holiday, and I did a whole heap of training up there, and it was running in Port Douglas is completely different to Melbourne. And I came back early, like later in the week on the Friday, then I had a big run on that Sunday, and it uh, yeah definitely definitely was a tougher run, but yeah no the the hundred k was was great. What sort of pace were you doing the hundred in? So we did the we averaged uh, five minute forties per k for the hundred k. So, but That's like we had, doing. yeah, but like having so many people involved, like it's it's something it just makes it so much easier and funner. And seeing so many, like we had fourteen people run their first marathon that day, and that like to see the like how happy they were and the satisfaction on their face was like it's just something. That I'll remember forever that it's it's it wasn't just about me running a hundred, it was about everyone just sitting there bar and having a crack at something that, that was going to be challenging, but we could all get through together. Yeah, that's yeah, that's such a great way to look at it. And that's exactly what you're trying to raise awareness of as well. And to get people yeah. to think about about not just running, but just life in general as well. Yeah. Uh, and sure. then so you started the day one of the 50 days on the Melbourne Marathon. Day, is that right? Yes, I did. Yes. So did you have to run a couple of extra laps of the G so you could get the extra seven and a bit Ks done? Well, today uh, I've got a funny story for that one, actually. So obviously I was a bloody pumped to get started on day one. I uh, got, got a re- worked, actually worked all day that Saturday for myself, the last job that I did, because obviously not can't do too much work for myself during this 50 days because I just don't have the time. So I'm just working for my boss. I actually uh, set my alarm for 4.15 and I've set it for 4.15 p.m. instead of a.m. And I've woken up at 6 o'clock, luckily. The marathon starts at 7. I was like, oh, you're kidding me. So I quickly called my uncle up who was dropping one of his uh, one of his mates off at the start line and he was just down about 15 minutes from my house. So he came back, picked me up, quickly got ready, got to uh, got to about 4.5K 4. from the start line. So dropped me off there. I quickly ran four and a half K into the start line. So, cause I planned to do eight beforehand. I was meant to be yeah. in there at six. So got four and a half done. And then start, obviously started the marathon. Ran with a couple of mates running there first. So we were just sort of cruising about, yeah, ran it probably a bit quicker than I would have liked, but it was sort of when you're running in a marathon, you always tend to do run a bit quicker when there's people in front of you and all that. So. Ran with a couple of mates for 36k, and then one of our mates dropped off a little bit at the hill. It gets you every time the Tan Hill in the uh, in the Melbourne Marathon, and it's so yeah, we, me and my other mate kept running. And when you uh you come into you coming down through the tunnel and you turn left into the G to finish off for the last sort of 500 meters. So my other mate went in, and I've uh, I've done a U turn and run backwards. <laughs> to, be, to, to my other mate that was still running. So I made up a K there and then went back in, got another K and was about 100 metres from the finish line. But I still had a K to make up, so I had to turn around and run backwards again. Um, <laughs> and then come back in. I was getting some uh, pretty funny looks from people. They were going, what is this bloke doing? But yeah, no, it was all a part of it. We got it done day one. So it wasn't the, uh, wasn't the best of starts, but yeah, no, it was uh, it's all pretty funny when you look back on it. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great start. I reckon it's a yeah a special one to start with. And then I saw a photo of you for recovery sitting in your ice bath with a, a an oak vanilla milk drink and a and a dart. So that's yeah. ideal. Yeah, I've uh, I've, 
I've uh, yeah, sort of been a smoker for a while now. Uh, I do, I do still smoke, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, is, that uh, your, it's uh, mate, is that your preference on drink as well? Because I'm more of a dare double espresso man myself. The oak, I, I'm more of yeah, I like more vanilla. Vanilla oaks are good. I'm, I'm more of a vanilla man. Right, and and something I didn't mention as well is not only are you running fifty k's every day for fifty days, but you're still doing your work as a landscaper. On Monday yes. to Friday. Yeah, so Monday to Friday working for my boss, seven till is working seven till two thirty. So he's looking after me a little bit, giving me the hour early finish, which is nice. So it sort of gives me a bit of time to get to the location for that day. So yeah, that's nah, it's 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 great to have his support behind me because yeah, obviously he's still gotta run his company and obviously I still wanna rock up to work every day and do my job. Obviously, you can't just stop everything you do. So it's all sort of a part of the challenge. And, yeah, you got to obviously well, still yeah, get on with your life. As well. like it's, 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 yeah, the more you look into it, the more impressive and amazing is what you do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just, Thanks, yeah, mate. The mind. But the the recovery, so you're starting your runs at 4 o'clock in the afternoon most days, like Monday to Friday you are, and then yep. sort of get over around 9 or 9.30. Is that is yeah, so... Pretty much um, starting the runs at four o'clock roughly every day. Usually done by about quarter to nine, nine o'clock. Um, get home from the runs about, yeah, about, as you said, about 9.30. Jump straight in the, I've got a uh, got a chest freezer, which I've turned into an ice bath. So jump in there for sort of eight to 10 minutes every night. And then uh, sort of try and warm up a little bit naturally before getting in the shower. So I'll, yeah, I'll eat my dinner which has been taking me sort of a little bit of time to get down when you're pretty tired and fatigued late. But, yeah, got to make sure I get that in. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much shower yeah, into bed and do it all again the next day. How, does, how do you go when the alarm goes off? In the morning? Yeah, no, well, the thing about it is, like, obviously the first sort of hour, I'm a bit slow getting up. Like, obviously a bit tired, fatigued. But once I get moving, I'm, I'm pretty good. But... When you when you look for, when you look forward to doing something, oh, like I love doing this, and I love just getting people involved. It makes it yeah, it makes it so much more enjoyable. Yep, yeah, and yeah, like you say, once you get going, then yeah, during the day you're fine. It's sort of it'd be like when you stop and sit down. That's probably when you start. Do you start dozing off at all? Yeah, well, I've sort of um, I do a post every night about the run and the day. I sort of do it using that as a bit of a journal. To remember what happened and stuff like that. But yeah, there's been a couple of times where I'm sort of sitting there and I'm on the nod a little bit late at night. But <laughs> that's uh yeah, that's yeah, definitely. And one of the one of the more again, one of the more impressive things I find you doing is you're doing updating Instagram stories during the run and you're tagging people that are running along with you. So are you doing all that yourself while you're running? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I mean I like it's it's such a good feeling to, and like, I can't thank people enough that have got involved and got behind it because without them, this doesn't happen. It would be a lot less fun sort of running by myself all the time. And I'm big on, you know, getting stuck in all together, sort of one in all in community. And that's, that's sort of where, where we're at at the moment with it. But yeah, no, it's been, but I've been honestly, I'm overwhelmed with the support and the messages that I've received. It's uh, certainly, certainly great to see. Yeah, one of the guys who messaged you was uh, he who who he let me know about you was Jay Child from um, Tassie Turf Guru. And yeah, so he's, he did. He's, yeah, he said he's going to be coming over to to run for a day. Yeah, well. mate, which is uh, which is unbelievable, massive. I, when I got that message, I got a little uh, little jeed up and a bit of a perk in my step. I was like, that's uh, that's unbelievable. He's going to fly over here and. Join us for a few days, so obviously the word spreading around, which is great. But yeah, we just the the main aim. I always want to make these runs fun. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. Obviously, that's that's what you want to get out of life. You want to have fun. You want to, you know, do something you're passionate and you love. And that if you're doing that, then it it, it makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah, yeah, and Jade is good for that as well because he did. I think it was a ten k run he did. And he did it pushing a wheelbarrow just just because he's did not he? Yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't tell me that one. So, yeah, so it was like a like a ten k fun run. So there's heaps of people, and there he is. 
he's running around with his wheelbarrow the whole way through. Oh, how good's that? That's unreal. Getting the weird looks. <laughs> so, have you? I heard you on a on the Humble Climb podcast. There's there's two episodes you're on there, and they're both awesome to listen to. Um, yeah. And you were speaking with him about uh, what you're doing on Derby Day, uh, which again is you're just going next level again because you're getting, <laughs> getting involved with that. So on Derby Day, you're going to be getting up at three o'clock in the morning to go for your run. Yeah, so next Saturday we've got a uh, yeah, I got an early start next Saturday, uh from start. Um and then yeah, running a uh I did it I did it last year, so I I I'll try it, yeah, I, I don't really drink anymore. Have the occasional one every now and again, but yeah. So yeah, ran a ran a car park on Derby Day. It was great fun last year. So doing it again this year. So gotta get the fifty K done before heading into uh Flemington Racecourse at headquarters at about ten in the morning. So on the on the Friday before that, are you still doing the four o'clock one? Yeah, I'm hoping to speak to my boss and yeah. hopefully get maybe an early finish that day so I can uh so I can get that done. Um yeah, a bit earlier and try and get into bed and recover a little bit before getting up at three in the morning. So hopefully if he's listening to this, hopefully <laughs> <laughs> We can uh, we can work something out there. And have you been following a lot of the um, like the other running freaks like Ned Brockman and Russ Cook? I think it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely have. Yeah, Ned Brockman's definitely um, a big inspiration of mine. What he did was um, amazing. That run he, he, did he ran hundred from... k. Did he run across Australia? So it was hundred k's a day for forty six days or something. Yeah, he did. So he's uh, he sort of really put put that on the map. And sort of that definitely gave me an idea to do it. But what's uh the the one that did it for me was when he did uh fifty marathons in fifty days, and he was still working as a as a sparky. When I got up, no, definitely not, definitely not. <laughs> he had it pretty easy, didn't he? No, no, no. So yeah, he um he's yeah big inspiration of mine. What he did was amazing. But yeah, that that sort of gave me the idea. And then, yeah, I thought, well, he's done that. I sort of, you know, you've got to be a little bit original. So I sort of came up with the idea of adding the extra AK or to make it at 50K a day for 50 days. Yeah, it's not round numbers. Yeah, exactly right. Works well as well, 50, 50 and 50. Yeah. Now, have you been following uh, Russ Cook? He's, I think he's from England. He's, he's, oh, uh, I do follow him. He's, he's, uh, he's nearly next level again, I think. He's done... He's, I've, yeah, he's, Running across uh, Africa, I don't know if he's going up the gas or across the side, but he's running the length of Africa, and he's currently Crazy. I think he's about eighty nine days in, and he have, yeah. he's doing like yeah, about fifty or sixty k's a day, except when he gets held up at gunpoint, then yep. busy issues and just just it's, wild. It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. There's some uh, there's some crazy people out there, but yeah. Now, when did when did you start running? Was and was it? To, do, to achieve anything because I used to run back in the day and I could only ever run and train when I actually had a goal that I was working towards. So I'd run a couple of marathons. So I would do it for that. But other than that, I'd, like I'll go for walks now, but I need to have some, a goal to aim for. So what started you running? Yeah, so I was always into my running um, when I was younger, through school, good runner, played lots of sports. Um, and then... Once I sort of finished school, I sort of got into the uh, partying scene for a bit. Probably, yeah, definitely a bit too longer than I would have liked. Um, had a few issues there and put on a lot of weight. I was weighing about 92 kilos at one stage. So, And then, yeah, back in 2020 during COVID, yeah, I, was, I wasn't in a great way mentally and doing using certain things to uh, sort of escape from how I was feeling. And then, yeah, I got back into running probably midway through 2020 during COVID with a, with a mate of mine that was like, come run, let's do it. And I was like, yeah, I always loved running. So I did it for a little bit and then sort of went, got off it. And then pretty much since the end of 2020, I haven't looked back. So I've been right into my fitness, back into sports, back into, yeah, running, gym, all that. I did a, did a fundraiser back in 2021, did the whole year sober, no drinking, no gambling, no anything. And for every kilometre I ran throughout that year, I donated $1 towards the fundraiser we did for our Mental Health Foundation Australia. And that pretty much, yeah, 
So I ran my first marathon back then, back in um, yeah October, twenty twenty one, and then yeah, sort of, just sort of slowly been progressing the whole way through. Yeah. What, was, what time did you do your first marathon in? So I did my first one was three hours twenty four fifty eight. Wow. Mine was three twenty six. Oh, <laughs> that was the uh, Great Ocean Road one. So then I had to run an extra three k. Oh, did you? And I did that. Did uh, Great that Ocean. Was, yeah, I did the. I did that. Um, that were six minute k's after the marathon part. So I was slow for those it last. Gets three. you that, that that last that little <laughs> bit extra just really gets you. You don't know why they have to have it. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, just it. really just really make it tougher for you and i'll tell you what that last 2k or whatever it is it feels like it's never gonna end because i actually yeah. i did that i did um the great ocean road for the first time this year just as a little bit of i didn't do any didn't do any training for it just i played a game of footy the day before i thought <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll run it just for a bit of, bit of fun and geez it was uh probably that was probably the toughest run i've ever done it was yeah blowing an absolute gale 50k headwinds just straight into it the whole way it was about 10 yeah, degrees yeah. raining and some of those hills getting up there felt like you're going up and down on the one spot <laughs> yeah it was it was a beautiful day when i did it so it was the hills weren't were that hard you run up and you get to rest when you're going back down the other side of it but, yeah um, like you said before, when you go for a run or for a walk or any type of exercise, you feel so amazing after it. Like it's the hardest part oh. is to get your shoes on and go and do it. But then soon yeah. you start and you you're laughing. Well, I, I find it gives you like it gives you more energy for the rest of the day or like you just feel you feel on cloud nine afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, like the, the, the I recommend people to listen to the the Humble Climb podcast, the two episodes you're on there, because you go into your story. And it makes it even more uh, amazing how you're doing now compared to where you have been previously. So, like, you've really yeah. climbed out and, you know, and now you're inspiring other people to to look after themselves as well. Have you had people yeah. messaging you on Instagram since you started doing the run? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the messages of support and, you know, even I've had a few, like, even getting messages from your friend Jade about saying how, you know, he wants to come over and run. That's 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 unbelievable. I had a lot of people messaging me saying, "Oh, you know, I've seen what you were doing. Went for a run today." I was like, "That's unreal. Like, that's what that's 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 what I want want out of it as well. That makes me feel like I'm doing something to help others. And that's that's what that's what life's about. It's about being a good bloke and helping others. Yep, couldn't agree more. That's what I tell the kids all the time. Like, good things happen to good people. Exactly um, right. Yeah, it's not only are you being a good person, but it makes you feel good as well. Other people are benefiting. Oh, There's no losers. Yeah. No, hundred percent. And that's 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 all out of from doing this fifty k a day for fifty days. It obviously the challenge of it is what I've I wanted to get out of it. The challenge of running fifty k a day for fifty days. But my goal is to get as many people involved, and that's what it's all about. What it's not about me. It's about everyone. And it's about what they set, want to set their bar to, but challenge themselves. They don't have to run 50K. It could be run 10K, but just about sort of getting out there, getting amongst it and doing it. Yeah. And you've got the the shirt you're wearing as well. You're selling them. So even the yeah, people selling who selling these. Them, run, yeah, it'd be good to get one of them. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and yeah. well. Are you posting them out as well? Like as Yeah, we've, we've po- I've actually posted a couple to... Uh, the UK to a few mates that are living over yeah. there at the moment. So they're actually going to jump in and do a, uh, once the t-shirts are over, they're actually going to run a 50K. So we're going to try and figure out something where we can get them on the FaceTime, which would be good. Because well, 3 a.m. might be a good time for that. That's more suitable for them. Yes. Yes, it would. It would, definitely. Uh, and, and again, uh, like, there's probably 15 things that blow me away the more I look into it. But on um, Tuesday, you run on a treadmill at a... Yeah, on the, the treadmill. I, yeah. I always found running on a treadmill so much harder than running, you know, on a path. But your times yeah. are pretty similar. I mean, it's mentally, it's t- it's quite challenging, but it's also been really good to sort of break it up a little bit for me because obviously when you're running with a lot of people, you socialise in a fair bit. So it's been nice to have a bit of time just to re- relax and reflect. Um, it's also been really good 
on the body as well afterwards because obviously the impact is a lot lower than um, when you're, you know, pounding the pavement the whole time, hitting in the hard ground. So that's been really good. I've been pulling up really well off it. Um, and it's also been really good in the aspect as well. Like the next, once I've, when I'm running on the treadmill, like I've had a couple of mates come in and do maybe 10 to 15K late, um, which has been good. But it's made me really excited to get back amongst it with everyone the next day, which has been really good as well. So what are the – you've got on your Mondays and Fridays, yeah, uh, you've got set days and then the weekend you mix it up a bit. Is that right? So what, go, yeah. Talk me through them. Yeah, so Mondays we're at Albert Park Lake every day, kick things off at four. Tuesday we're on the treadmill at uh, Hustler Gym, who are a sponsor of the run and who are great, are great blokes. They've just opened up a new gym. Um, I've been, they've been writing me a program for the last couple of years and provide um, – Prescribe me on a nutrition plan as well. Wednesdays we're at Caulfield Park. Thursdays we're at the uh, the tan with a big uh, big Anderson Street Hill to get up fourteen times, which is fun. Uh, and then Fridays we're at Duncan McKinnon. Um, and then the weekends, like yesterday, we just did the twenty five k out and back along Beach Road, which is nice. Which is really good to just change it up after running laps during the week the whole time. And then today we did a big fifty k loop for long. Gardner's Creek around the city and then back to uh back to where we started. Today's run was was unreal, probably one of the one of the best ones yet. Got about 40 people involved and running through the streets is 26 and sunny, running through the docklands, running through the tan a little bit. So yeah, no, it was a great day today. Yeah. So that, and today's day 15, so you've done 750 k is that right? Yeah, day 15 today, yep. Insane. So other than the um the Derby Day one, are there any other unique days to come, like out of the ordinary ones? No, nah, that's that's pretty much it at the moment. Yeah, no, nah, Derby Day is the only one that's got to be, oh. yeah, a bit bit different. <laughs> I mean, but I'll yeah. tell you, I've actually, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, just something unique. But it's something unique, something I had in the, uh, in the, in the calendar for the, for the whole year when I sort of started planning what how I wanted this 50k day for 50 days to look. And we're at the 29th of October today and you're planning on finishing on the 3rd of December. So have you got a, a big hoo-ha plan for that? Yeah, so we're working through that at the moment. We're going to finalise in the location. Um, we've just got to obviously work out, uh, yeah, sort of who's – we're going to go through cancel and uh, do that work out where we're going to we have it just with the regulations but yeah if we're sort of going to make it like a cook going to have like a proper event where people can have a distance to enter a 5k 10k half marathon 30k marathon and 50k so it'll be sort of maybe five dollars entry to get involved and then you sort of pencil in what distance you want to run and then come down and then we're going to have a big fundraiser day at the finish line it was awesome. And your goals to uh, raise fifty grand as well as so another nice round number there. So, uh, yeah, I can't encourage you enough if you're listening to contribute to that. And it, and you can buy one of those shirts for fifty bucks. Yep. Or, yep. So yeah, on your there's like there's a GoFundMe page on your Instagram page, so people go to that as well. Yeah. So I've got yeah got the link on my uh on my Instagram page. Um, I've been blown away. All the donations so far have been unbelievable. We've nearly ticked. I think we ticked over eleven k, which is. Yep. Been unreal, and I greatly appreciate everyone that's donated so far. The support's been great. Yeah. Well, it was a bit more of a running chat than a landscaping chat today, but I no, that's, thank that's you all right. Coming on. It's awesome what you're doing. So thank you so much for doing it and coming on and taking time out of your recovery to come on and share your story. No, nah, thank you for very much for having me on. I'm uh, I'm very honoured.